Welcome to week number two of the December Weekly Collaboration. This collaboration is hosted by Jovi at Creating with Jovi. If you would like to join in, feel free to just post a video with a chronicling of your journaling of your past week or a special Christmas memory and use the hashtag, uh, hashtag um, December Weekly and you will, be, you will be among the rest of us that post videos every Monday through the month of December. Um, last week, I sort of journaled uh, childhood memories with the theme of uh, Christmas trees. And so that was a lot of fun. Um, this week, I am going to do sort of a it's an overarching theme, but it has two components to it. I'm going to do uh, the theme of school and church, but the overarching theme is um, older people in my life. And when I say older, I mean older than me as a child. <laughs> people who came alongside me or were given um, stewardship over me through in school and in church um, and the memories I have of those people during the Christmas season. Um, so in order to do this, I pulled a few photographs, just like last week, I will share them with y'all. Um, so I don't have any pictures really of school at Christmas time. Um, most of the pictures I have of school are, are during other events. But at the beginning of the video, you might have seen a eight millimeter film strip that my husband and I took from my parents and digitized. Um, and so that is a, a film strip of me in preschool in a local parade that we had at Christmas time. It was probably the Saturday after Thanksgiving, if I'm guessing. Um, but that video showed a float with my preschool teacher at the time, Mrs. Kathleen, and our class on the float. And we were all dressed up in our Sunday best. It must not have been super cold because I don't think any of us were wearing coats. Um, but yeah, she was sitting up on this chair at the top of the float and waving and instructing all of us to wave. We had been practicing waving. And it was a very special it was a big deal for me. I was four and I had never been in a parade. So that was a huge, huge deal. And it was really fun. That was probably the only time I've ever ridden on a float, come to think of it. But so Miss Kathleen, among um, other very special individuals have made an impression on my life and uh, made Christmases more special. And I'll share a little more about her in a little bit. But um, here are a few pictures of church events. Didn't mean to cut that little boy off at the end. So this is my church choir and we did a Christmas program every year. Um, and this year we had 
pictures that my dad had actually drawn and we sang the song C is for the Christ child I think that's what the song is called so we go through and we talk about uh, we sing about all the letters that spell out Christmas and how they relate to the Christmas story from the Bible so that's a picture of us holding up our signs and then this is another year evidently we just did a dramatization of the Christmas story and I'm this little angel down here in the very bottom corner. Um, every time I've been in any sort of Christmas play, I've only gotten to be an angel. That's been my one and only role. I don't know what that means. <laughs> not not the speaking role, but I did get to sing, and I actually got to be in um, the production of The Great Christmas, no, The Best Christmas Pageant Ever, which was so fun. I was 12 or 13, and once again, I was in the angel choir, but... I remember that so fondly. We um, we did three shows every day for three days every weekend um, for I think three weekends. It was very busy. Like that was our December and October through November practicing. But this is much before that, and that was not that was not with the church. That was just with the city, the city theater. But this is. This is me and these are all my other friends. She was one of my best friends right here next to me. And we have the wise man I see. I don't know where the shepherds are, maybe. Maybe she's a shepherd, I don't know. Um, and then here's another picture of, this is just one of those uh, church parties at someone's house. <laughs> so we all, I think it was a gingerbread decorating contest. And this is the gingerbread house that my mom made. Um, I think this is probably the only gingerbread house she's ever made because she did not enjoy the process. And it was it was struggling quite a bit um, to be held up. In fact, inside the front door, you can see a little yellow plastic cup. That was probably the main support beam for the house. <laughs> Nevertheless, though, I remember her making this and I remember how magical it was and how hard it was for me to keep my hands off of it. I was probably six at the time. But as you can see, this little girl has some of those pecan sandies and she's got a cup of that yummy red punch it seems to always be around at Christmas time so those are the three pictures I have um, and then I just grabbed a little handful of ephemera and I thought I would just uh, as I write these memory or get the, the page ready for writing my Christmas memories down I would pull from these so we'll talk about um, I think since we started with the video with school, with my parade, we'll start with school first. Um, and then somewhere hidden in here, I probably should have pulled this out to put on this page. I have an ornament that I made in preschool with Miss Kathleen. If I can find it. Sorry, I should have pulled this out before the video started. Um, but it's just a simple little ornament. Here it is. This is just a little, it almost feels like wax coated. I think we colored it and then we might have ironed wax, ironed it between two pieces of wax paper. And so this is my little ornament. So I'll probably affix this here somehow or put it in a pocket. I chose this page because of the hymn, the carol. So I wanted to have um, chronicle my church and school memories next to this hymn book or carol book. I guess I could put this school on this page and do the church memories back here. But so here's this guy. So that was made in Miss Kathleen's class. And then another thing that we did every year in school, at least in preschool, I cut this out from a Vermont country magazine. But Miss Kathleen is, I remember very well, she taught us how to make these little tiny cream cheese mints. Ours were not this fancy. We just rolled them into balls and put them on wax paper and we used a fork to press down and make the little lines, kind of like you do with peanut butter cookies. But we made mints and we packaged them up and we took them home to our parents to give as a little Christmas gift to keep as a family or share. So I will put this here. And let's see if there's anything else over here on this side that I could use for school. Oh yeah, I found this picture. This is a this is a teacher in a classroom. It looks kind of like a one-room schoolhouse, but 
not that old maybe. Um, she's got a beautiful Christmas tree for the classroom and she's got a sign put up and she looks extremely enthusiastic about it. It looks like she might be teaching the kids some songs. And to me growing up, um, Chris, I don't know about now because obviously I have not been in public schools for a very long time and I don't know that many teachers, at least of little kids, but um, I feel like when I was a kid, um, Christmas was still very much a part of our day in and day outs at school, even in public school. Um, I don't know about now. I'm, I'm assuming things have probably changed, uh, but um, I do know that when I was in school, um, our teachers would pray with us. We would say the pledge at the beginning of the day, and we would say our blessing before we went to the lunchroom. And y'all, I went to a several public schools and we all did this. And so I don't think it was just like, I, I went to a country school in the middle of nowhere. I really feel like more schools did that back then. I could be wrong. And at, at the time I remember thinking, you know, I didn't know my teacher could pray with us. And maybe she was the only one that did. And I just happened to have this one teacher in second grade that did this, but she was very bold about her faith. And she taught us, she had a guitar and she taught us folk songs and frog went and courting and things like that. But we also learned songs about uh, God and Jesus. And so, and then when we had our Christmas program, we sang Silent Night and Away in a Manger and things like that. So I just kind of wanted to chronicle like what life was like for me in public school even. Um, and how Christmas was very much a part of our preparations every year. We had a big program and the parents came and things like that. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to add to this page was, I actually printed off three versions of this. When I was in the fifth, sixth grade, fifth and sixth, um, being an army kid, um, we had a elementary school, middle school and high school on the army base, but we also had one right outside of the army base because quite a lot of us chose to live there instead of on base. But a lot of the classmates in my classes were also kids in the military, so, or parents in the military. So one of the things that we were required to take was German. In fifth grade, we had a class every day in German because after leaving our stations in the U.S. quite a lot, of the military servicemen and women were stationed in Germany. And obviously they thought it would be very beneficial if we had a jump start on the language. So I remembered a good bit of it. My son took German in high school and I promised him that I would take it along with him. And I did. Well, I say I did. I got through one and a half years of his three years before my schedule just would not allow me to keep up. Plus, it's hard to learn a language when you're in your mid 40s. It's much easier when you have a malleable young brain. Um, but I did remember a lot of what I had learned. And the year that, the first year we took German, our teacher taught us this song. I think there's two titles for it. Ihr Kinderlein Comet and Die Kinder an der Krippe. So we, we learned all of the verses of the song. I practiced it day in and day, day out, of course. You have to when it's another language. And we performed in a school assembly before the entire school and all of our parents. And it was super intimidating, but super fun. And I'm so glad that she taught us this. And so I really would like to talk about that here in this journaling. Um, and then here's all the verses. I printed this one. And this was just fun. I don't know. I might use this one instead. I haven't decided. Although I really like this antique looking one. This was a scan that I found on Pinterest of a napkin that has the song on it with little pictures. Is that not cute? I don't know how old this is, but I thought that was super cute. Okay, so let me find my scissors. Um, so yes, my teacher was really unique. She was not German. Uh, my music teacher at the time was actually German. And I remember thinking, why don't you two switch? <laughs> um, but she, she knew, she knew enough German to teach it to us. And she was a great teacher. Um, and I often wonder, I know a couple of my friends from that class ended up did going to, 
to Germany, and I, I always wondered, did they remember any of that? Did they get to use it? And um, my mom was super upset, or I guess disappointed, that we never got to go to Germany. But I, I say all the time, if we had gone to Germany, I probably would not have met my husband. So I'm glad we didn't. So let me, um, let's see, I kind of want to fussy cut this image out because this teacher's enthusiasm kind of reminds me of my teacher that taught us German. So I think I might put her at the top of this song sheet on this page. So while I'm doing this cutting and laying out, let me tell you a little bit more about Miss Kathleen, the lady that you saw in the video at the beginning. So when my dad was in seminary, there was um, a Baptist church. It wasn't on the campus of the seminary, but it was probably three-fourths of a mile from the campus. And they had a very good children's preschool program. And so my mom and dad decided to send me there. Um, but Miss Kathleen was the wife of a gentleman who was in seminary with my dad. And they were a good bit older than my parents. I think he had decided to go to seminary later in life, but they had a, they had a, a daughter, an only child, who was a good bit older than me, probably 10 years older than me, eight to 10 years. And she babysat me a little bit, I think. And they were just, um, just super cool people. You know, they were just good as gold, I guess you could say, just down to earth. Um, we ate dinner with them a lot. They came to our house and ate dinner with us a lot. <clears throat> and then when she became my teacher, oh man, I was so excited because I thought Miss Kathleen was so fun. She made everything so fun. And we did so many cool things in that class. She taught us how to do the paintings where you have the powdered tempera paint mixed with a little bit of water and soap bubbles and we would use a straw and blow bubbles onto paper. It's funny now because I know junk journalers do that now uh, to make papers for our journals and I really want to try that when the weather gets warm but yeah I remember that. She was the first person to teach us how to do that. Again we learned how to make mints. Uh, I remember we made bread one time in class. Um, something else. Oh, the first time I had ever seen or heard of Mr. Sketch scented markers. You know what those are. I remember being just so amazed that there were markers that smelled like, like food that everyone else was coloring. And I just sat there and opened one after the other and sniffed them all. And my teacher, Miss Kathleen was finally like trying to encourage me to at least draw something so I could take home a picture. But to this day, I still love scented markers and pencils and crayons. I love it. I think it's one of the coolest inventions ever. But, um, yeah, Miss Kathleen was one of a kind. She was um, very musical. She had a really good singing voice. And the reason why I played that song at the beginning was because my mom and dad always tell the story. When we first walked into the seminary at Christmas time, they decorated the seminary gorgeously for Christmas. There was a giant Christmas tree in the center hall and it was full of only white ornaments. I think some people call it a Christmas tree, but I don't really know what that means. Um, but you know, the white crochet type ornaments. And um, there was this, like a spiral staircase or like a rotunda staircase that kind of went around the room. And we walked in for that Christmas, I guess, tree lighting event. And Miss Kathleen was standing up there on the balcony and she was singing. And that was the song that was singing when my family walked in. And that was the first time I'd ever remember hearing O Come, e o Come Emmanuel. And so because of that and because my parents talked a lot about Miss Kathleen being in that room that day and singing it, um, whenever I hear that song or play that song, I think about her. So I decided to play that for you guys. Um, I, I didn't plan on playing it myself, but I cannot find a royalty-free, copyright-free, um, YouTube-friendly version of that song. So I decided just to get a little video snippet for y'all. 
Okay, so I don't want to cover this up, so I'll probably do some sort of a pocket here so I can have a place to put my memories of Miss Kathleen and Miss... Um, I don't know why I cannot remember my teacher that taught me German. I do not know why I cannot remember her name. I sat last night and racked my brain and tried to think of it and could not think of it. So I am so sorry, Miss Teacher, for not remembering your name. I don't think I have a good pocket. I was thinking that one of these things that I had here would be a good pocket. Okay, let's just pause on that and come back. I guess I could make this a pocket. If I got some red paper. Let me see. There's my Starbucks. Let's see if I have some red or white paper to put this down onto. So anyway, sorry to continue my little story about Miss um, Miss Kathleen. Not long after we left the seminary, um, my parents received word that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And they were heartbroken. And they kept saying, we need to go up and see them. They lived in New York State. They lived pretty far away. And, you know, that's not really something that you can easily just run up there when you are just starting out in a new job and you have young children. So we sadly did not ever make it up there. But it was just a few years, maybe three or four years after that, we found out that she had passed away. And it was just so sad. She left her husband and her daughter. And I think that was one of the first people that I knew personally that did pass away from cancer. That was sort of my, one of my first, I guess, forays into the world of people get sick and people pass away when they're not old. But I will always remember Miss Kathleen and the wonderful things that she taught us. She was a great mom. She was a supportive and loving wife. And she was an excellent preschool teacher. And I'm so glad that I have pictures of them as well as that um, unbelievably precious video of me sitting on the float with her. I will be cherishing that forever. Um, one of my best friends was named Roseanne. I think she was sitting beside me in that video. We were inseparable. In fact, I bet Miss Kathleen had a really hard time keeping us apart. We were probably quite the pair. I bet we talked a lot. I think about these people a lot. Some of them my parents kept in contact with, but a lot of them we didn't. We just lost contact as we left and moved on. I'm not seeing any cardstock, so what I might have to do is use regular paper and just have a not so thick pocket, but I think that would be fine because this is, um, this book is already chunky as it is. Y'all probably hear my dishwasher. I've got it going in the background. I feel like every time I decide to make a video, I have the dishwasher on lately. <laughs> if I trim this, this will work just fine. Let me take the height off of it a little bit. Okay. Melt in it. No, I don't need that. We can take that bottom part off too. Okay. That'll work. Sometimes I don't use my paper trimmer. Do y'all? Do y'all just kind of like wing it and eyeball it sometimes? Sometimes it's too much trouble to get it out. All right, where's my glue book? I keep putting it over here and I need it. it's not sticky. I'm kind of off frame at this moment, but I'm not doing anything exciting. I'm literally just gluing. Okay. So this gives me great, 
a great little space to record some memories of school. And what I'll do is I'll create a little tag to tuck in here with him. I don't have the heart to write on Santa. I know you guys understand. And then with this one, I might decide to do some sort of a flip out so I can write about um, German, my German teacher. But let me go ahead and glue this down. My little bottle. I love this icing bottle, but it is getting low. I need to refill it. Do y'all see those salt dough ornaments? Did y'all ever make those growing up? I know they were real popular to make in the 70s. And when my mom first had me, my aunt made a bunch of them and put all of our names on them. And I still have it. I cannot believe that it has not been eaten by critters all these years. There we go. Just a little thin pocket does the job, nothing super fancy. And I will put a journaling card in here where I can talk about Miss Kathleen. And tuck Santa in here. And then this will help me remember my German class. Okay, now let's flip back and let's talk about church memories. You've already seen my pictures. So, let me see. Let's, that kind of, this is a, a digital from KB and Friends. It's her little, little golden book lookalikes. So that's kind of like a children's nativity play. That's why I grabbed that. And then I found this little postage stamp from, that's not a stamp, I don't think. I just realized it's probably a seal. American Bible Society, Isaiah 9, 6. Um, and then I found some of these, again, are not, co they are copywritten. So this is just a little digital with some choir children in front of a stained glass window. And then this is off of a Christmas card. It's almost Rembrandt-like how, you know, he was called the painter of light. So emanating here from baby Jesus, we have light. I love that. I love when painters can use light so effectively. That's my favorite. Um, and then I pulled this recipe. This is from an estate sale. The very first time I had this, do y'all know what cornflake holly is? Um, it was at a church party, and it might have been this one. But um, I've seen it done in wreaths, but that's a lot harder to make. And obviously when you, honestly, when you pick them up, they kind of just fall apart. So most of the time, um, ever since this party, when I think they were in wreaths, I've seen them just like a jumble of the holly leaves with the red hots in the middle. So what this basically is, is it's like a marshmallow Rice Krispie treat, but it uses cornflakes and green food coloring, so it looks like holly leaves, and then you use red hots. That's what we call them. Cinnamon candy, so red hots. So I wanna tuck this into a pocket on this page. Um, speaking of candy, I feel like whenever we went to visit people in their homes, a lot of times I would go with my dad and some of the deacons to visit those who were uh, not able to come out to church because they were old or sick. I feel like all the little old ladies had bowls of this candy sitting out. Not just at Christmas time, but all year round. And um, this and the ones that looked like they were, like the pictures of cherries and stuff or oranges and they were sliced, you know what I'm talking about. They never really tasted that good, but they were really pretty to look at. <laughs> um, and then I grabbed, not really to use in the journal, but just as inspiration. I think one of my favorite types of Christmas images on vintage cards is churches. So this, a lot of these have glitter. So we have some glittery snow. This is more of a muted brown, but it's so lovely. And then we have this one. We have a little bit of gold leaf on that one. And then this one, that's a very regal looking building. Again, the way the light, the sun, you can't see the sun, but you can kind of 
You, I love those days in the winter where it's real like stormy looking over here, but then the sun is coming in on this side and everything just looks purple and blue. And I think this artist captured that well. And then this is just a traditional, look, this one looks a little more lonely because I only see two people in it, but maybe they're just out for us an afternoon stroll. But I like these where it looks like people are coming into the church or going out of church. So, I'll set those aside. And then I think I got this in some happy mail from Cindy. I could be wrong about who sent it to me, but it's just a tiny little Christmas carol book. What are your favorite Christmas carols? Or do you have an all-time favorite? I think this little tiny book is adorable. I remember I was about 13 when I found out that Away in a, Away in a Manger had two different melodies, and that just blew my mind. Because we sang a different melody in the best Christmas pageant ever. And I, I remember thinking, I know the words, but now I have to make my voice do something different than it's not used to doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm wondering if I can use this as a tuck spot. Right here, the colors harmonize pretty well. We've got the dark green, dark green. Yes, I think we will do that. Oh my goodness, my glue's already dried up. It must be because the heat's on. <laughs> we don't have those summer humid days anymore where my glue would be fine, unplugged for 30 minutes or so. All right, so now we have a little tuck spot here. You know, I might tuck one of these vintage Christmas cards in here. Probably this one, because I like the colors. It's probably my favorite. So this is also textured. I'm putting my finger on it, and there's raised gold right there, gold glitter. Yeah, this is the one that says Cloyd and Clara. They sound like quite a pair, don't they? This is Mr. and Mrs. Cloyd and Clara. So we'll put Cloyd and Clara's card in here. And then I need something to journal on. Probably this, because this was something that I got off of, oh my goodness, let me think if I can remember. I can't remember. She's a YouTuber. She does beautiful journals. And last year she offered a bunch of her PDFs of Victorian Christmas things for free for download for 24 hours. And I was just lucky to grab it, but it's personal use only. So I've, I printed off some to use in my personal journals. And this is one of them. So I'll put this here and that will be what I write. Uh, I'll probably journal about Christmas memories of singing and because of these choir pictures oops put these choir pictures and i might even connect connect this somehow so i can have this sticking off the bottom but yeah and then over here on this side i will do oh let me show y'all this this is funny do y'all love family circus as much as i do Grandma only likes religious cards, so I'm sending her this one with St. Nick on it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I may have to use this as a, a tuck spot on this side. That's so cute. Um, so let's figure out what we're going to do. I've got this wrapping paper here. I might just glue this down to the wrap. I really don't want the page number. Let's see if I can cut this off. My mom gave me several family circus books recently to use in my journals and I was so excited. I felt like my grandma always had a rotating one on her refrigerator. She thought they were just the funniest kids. Yeah, I'm 
not sure if this wrapping paper is going to be substantial enough. Let me glue this down to some cardstock first. Let's do that. I feel like doing tuck spots today. I hope that's fine with y'all. I'm not doing elaborate pockets or flip outs or anything like that. I'm just, honestly, I just want to get these memories out and down. I will probably journal off camera today because this is going to be a long video because I had so much I wanted to talk about. It's not going to be big enough. I'll move over here so y'all can see it. <sighs> okay, so um, church memories. Let's keep going on that while I'm, I think I have to put some more glue here. Um, so I grew up in church. I keep telling people when I see them and they ask my, about my history, I say, I was going to church nine months before I was born because <laughs> my mom was a believer in Jesus before I was born. My dad was not, but he accepted Christ into his life when I was about nine or 10 months old. And it was not long after that that God called him into full-time ministry, which is why he went into seminary. But he did go to church with my mom. And so I was a nursery baby and then later became a preacher's kid. And I know there's lots of jokes about preacher's kids. Not all of them are what you hear is not always the truth, okay? <laughs> um, they're not always rebellious and sometimes they turn out great. And um, I had a lot of friends growing up that were also preacher's kids that turned out great. And I'm now 44 and I am still strong in my faith. In fact, I'm stronger now than I was last year and obviously way stronger than when I was a child. I'm not saying that I never had any hard moments and questioning years and doubts and, you know, temptations to go elsewhere and do other things, but the Lord has always drawn me back in, and He has surrounded me with family and, honestly, people in my churches that I've attended that kept me, in, in, you know, close into the fold, and He's given me awesome community and friends that love me but also speak truth to me when I need to hear it and convict me of things, keeping me accountable when I need to hear it. All those things are very important. It's how we build each other up in the body of Christ. And um, I know right now that there is a, and I wanna tread lightly here with what I say, but I feel like I would be disobedient if I did not share all of my story. And this includes part of what's been on my heart lately. I feel like the trend right now in America and maybe beyond is to shirk everything that you have been taught growing up in church and about God and about Jesus because of the failings of the church or if you have been hurt by someone in the church or um, you know, different unfortunate things that have happened in churches, abuse and racism and all of those things. They're all very ugly things and I'm not downplaying any of that. But my plea to anyone who is dealing with that is don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. In other words, one bad experience or one person in church ministry who did something that was not pleasing to God and hurt other people does not represent the entire church. There are so many faithful believers and people in churches who are tirelessly working to let, uh, to bring others to Christ and to share Christ with others and to raise children with the knowledge of what Jesus has done for them that a lot of times those people go ignored, uncelebrated at the least, and totally ignored at the very most. 
um, in my life, there has been many, many, many Sunday school teachers, youth workers, pastors, assistant pastors, children's pastors, youth pastors, <laughs> youth volunteers, um, that have poured tirelessly into me and the other people that they had stewardship over. And I'm eternally grateful to them for that. And there have been pastors in my life who did amazing, gigantic things for the Lord, but lived very humble and quiet and peaceful lives. They lived in small houses, unassuming roles, did not draw attention to themselves, you know, gave the shirt, literally gave the shirt off of their back. Um, one of my most influential pastors in my life does not advertise it, but he volunteers, or for many, many years, until just recently, volunteered by riding with the sheriff's department every Friday and or Saturday night to minister to the people that they came in contact with on their calls. That is ministry. That is hands-on ministry. That's the, type, the kind of ministry that Jesus did. And you don't often hear about those types of ministers. You hear about the ones that cause scandals or have moral failure or treat their wives or children horribly. Those are the loudest voices. And I just want to say nothing more than look beyond that. Um, ask other people their stories. There are other people like me who have positive experiences in the church, positive stories about people that have kept them on the path to becoming more like Jesus. And at often the, at the expense of making a greater name for themselves or doing anything else in the world they could be doing, but they choose to be uh, the hands and feet of Jesus. And I'm so grateful. I'm getting a little emotional about it, but it is it's something that I feel like needs to be spoken more uh, with everything going on. And so if you have been hurt by someone or the church as a whole, you know, if you, if there's a great divide between you and the church or the religious, you know, religious entities or whatever, all I ask of you is that you do not let it keep you from seeking Jesus. Um, people are imperfect. We may be saved by the blood of Jesus, but we are still sinners. We still do things that are not pleasing to God. None of us are perfect. And so don't base your view of Christianity as a whole on imperfect people and the example they set because we're always going to fail you. Jesus is the only one who will not fail you because he is perfect. So um, I, I know for myself, I did grow up in a Christian home. Uh, you know, definitely my mother, my father before I even knew it, what was going on. But um, I became, I am a product of VBS salvation Call, call to Salvation. It was at the end of a VBS, which is Vacation Bible School. I, I know a lot of churches still have it. Many have done away with it. But it was at the church that I always attend. I knew everyone there. I had heard the gospel story. I had heard the good news so many times before. But that August 1984, when I was six years old, for the first time, it made sense to me. And I knew that I wanted Jesus to uh, forgive my sins and change my life forever. And I am a product of VBS. <laughs> as old-fashioned and antiquated as many say that it might be today, I am eternally grateful for it and the people that worked behind the scenes to put it on and let the, the children in our community come hear about Jesus and his love and forgiveness and hope. So that is all I will say about that. Just a little encouragement for those of you who have found a good church and community. Congratulations. Yay. Exciting. Be the same for someone else that those people have been for you going forward. Um, be the hands and feet of Jesus to other people because so many people are hurting right now and they need they don't need they don't need someone else um you know i guess disappointing them um i believe that time is short and we don't have 
long on this earth you know we have our life is a vapor and so while we are here we are to make disciples that was jesus's last request of his disciples who then went forward and god started the church with them and i believe that is the same call we have today make disciples means helping all of us hand in hand walk together to become more like christ every day and if we're not doing that then we are not doing what jesus asked us to do so with that said i believe this is all i'm going to do on camera i think i'm going to journal on the back of this and probably these two i had someone comment be sure to write on the back of your photos and i do tend to do that my grandma did that and i'm so grateful for that and i also try to label them in my photo storage program on my computer but i'll probably write on the back you know who was in this picture and when it was taken and I will be journaling on the back of here and probably tucking another card to talk about my memories of church fellowship halls and potluck lunches <laughs> and Christmas programs and all of the wonderful things that were a part of growing up in church at Christmas time. Um, one of my most vivid memories is seeing my aunt's church choir perform Handel's Messiah live in its entirety. Oh my goodness, I had goosebumps. And that's probably the first time I got goosebumps hearing music. To this day, I love to listen to Handel's Messiah. But yes, definitely um, check out the other contributor contributors to hashtag December Weekly. It's so fun. This has been a fun project to work on with all of you. And I will see you in the next video. And of course, next Monday, I'll be posting another December Weekly. The theme of next week's video will be gifts, presents. So I'm excited about that one. I actually have a lot of photographs for that one. <laughs> um, but I hope all of you have a lovely beginning to your week. And I will talk with you soon.